Hey everybody, we're gonna try this again. This is Tina Marie, Sheila Lee. Tina Marie's cooking from the heart and you've got the junk and fiendices. And this is, I do not uh, rate this as a kid's show. Um, we have us a uh, adult libation. This is my cooking, my drinking, and whatever comes out of my mouth most of the time is backwards. That's why that we are called the Junk and Fingers, because I made that comment one time and it come out that way, and it kind of sort of stuck. So um, we're the Junk and Fingers, and we're adults. And we're having a libation. So, mamas, if your kids are in the room, you might. We're not going to use you know any potty mouth words. We're going to try real hard not to. We're going to try to keep it as clean as possible, but it, slippage can happen, especially at our age. So, anyhow. Today we are making meatloaf. Hello, Miss Tracy. Let's see what happens now. We're hoping that we're not even going to mess with the uh, the big uh, computer because I have not figured it out. Don't know how to do it. And I'm going to have to see if I can get a hold of uh, a friend of mine and see if he can help me out with it. But today we're doing meatloaf. And I've got a couple of announcements that I need to make. For anybody who goes back, uh, a lot of people are out working in the yards. And we'll probably look at, watch this later, uh, which sometimes I recommend because you get a good buzz and then watch it. It really is hilarious. Mm -hmm. So um, I know the, last, the for our very first video, I'll never forget. Um, I watched it, was it back. just a month ago. So uh, yeah, yeah, a month ago. And you know what? Speaking of a month ago, here's what happened. I had I had started this uh, cooking show uh, six or seven years ago. My mom. Uh, wanted me to do it, so I, I started doing it, or, but I didn't do the live thing, and um, so I started this cooking page when their mama got sick, and you know, we lost her, so I didn't do anything with it, and then actually Ashton and everybody um, was asking me, you know, if I would do it again, so I started it back up, so the first one was like an hour long, because we were like, we were doing this, huh, what, I mean, it was, it was just really funny, but about three or four margaritas, into the uh, the segment, it became the comedy hour, and it was hilarious. And going back and watching it later on the, the next day, it was hilarious because we we I'm telling you now I, I hurt myself laughing. My ribs were sore, so uh, she was going to be kind of watching the the comments and helping me out. She worked today, so she's a little bit tired. So uh, before I get started. Um, Again, for everybody who watches this later on, there's some things coming up. Um, Easter's coming up, as you know, um, which is next Sunday. And so we will not be doing a live cooking show together. Sheila does have to work. And so we are going to, um, I may do a couple of small videos, you know, making pea salad, this, that, and you're just bits and pieces, just, you know, regular um, cell phone um, taping of that kind of sort of stuff. And I like that. And then so the... The week, the week after it would be on April 16th. It's on a Sunday, starting at 12 o'clock. Um, and if anybody who needs any information, if you've not gone on here, um, I made, I did a post. Bobby Caldwell, VFW Benefit. It's on my cooking, uh, Tina Marie's Cooking from the Heart page. And if you go on there, okay, you don't have to respond, but, I, you know, but, I mean, it's nice to kind of know. But we're, um, we're doing a, uh, a benefit for Bobby Caldwell. He was in a really bad motorcycle accident, and I, I saw the videos of his leg at the doctor's office the other day, and just his strength and his courage is just amazing, and he's got to have surgery April 4th again, and I think, Teresa, you may have to correct me on this, but I think he's already had four, three or four surgeries already, several more to go. He still has, you know, bills to pay. He still has to eat, so um, we are thankful for... Uh, Joyce and Larry, all of them out there at the VFW. Um, we're going to be doing a, a barbecue pulled pork. We're going to have uh, baked beans, coleslaw, Texas toast, and or hamburger buns if you prefer to have a sandwich. We'll also have adult uh, and child uh, portions. Uh, the adults are going to be, the adult plate will be $12. A child plate will be $6. We have uh, child hot dog plates, three dollars, and we have uh, adult hot dogs, which is two. And we got we're gonna have chili, slaw, sauerkraut, stuff like that, chili, and all that to go on the hot dogs as well. Chips and a drink, 
And I am so tickled to announce that, you know, we, we not only have um, Wayne Buckner, who's going to be playing, oh my gosh, guys, excellent, excellent, man. You're talking about some good music now. We got a lineup. Uh, Wayne Buckner is he they they're donating their time and helping and we've got John Cox I mean come on you know we've got a music lineup uh, it's gonna kick off at 12 we're gonna have a um, three surgeries Teresa okay thank you um, we um, we're gonna have a live auction uh, we've got a lot of I don't even want to tell you everything that we've got but we've had, the community has been amazing. And I want to send a shout out to Teresa Watts. I got to tell you, this girl has run and run and run and made some of the most unique, awesome gift baskets. Some of them are going to be raffled. We are going to have a 50-50 raffle. Uh, I know that Ann Sissy Hubbard is doing uh, cakes for us for the cake walk. Um, we're going to start serving um, our, our food about two. <coughs> But we've got live music, cakewalk, an auction, um, gift ba uh, gift raffle, 50-50 baskets and stuff. So we've, it, it, it's going to be a big thing. And, it, you know, we, we appreciate so many people that's helped us. Uh, Teresa, if I forget anybody, I mean, I know that um, we've had uh, we've had Food Lion, Save More, Go Grocery, uh, many other cash stuff and all like that. But... Um, you're Budweiser, Pepsi, House. Waffle House is. It looks like they're going to be donated. Uh, we're going to be getting our. Uh, hopefully, we'll be getting our our Texas toast from there. The uh, bakery out in Arden is donating our bread. Uh, and God forgive me if I forget anybody, but we've had a lot of people just reach out. Uh, I'm excited to help Bobby out too. He's, you know, he's raised a lot of money and helped um, a lot of people at the VFW. And so this is well deserving of him. I mean, this is just not like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Five Points Restaurant. Yes, I want to shout out to Five Points Restaurant. Um, I don't want to, to forget anybody. And if I do, you know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna continue to plug this. I may go on every day. Um, Tracy, hopefully you're working on that list of everybody that you know. We're gonna mention everything um, that's helped and donated. Of course, you have really done a lot yourself. Um, so I love you and I appreciate that you for that. So Sheila's tired, so I'm not going to keep on about that. But we've got we've got that to do uh, real quick. Uh, the kennel, which is Dog Dad Gaming, also with Georgette Jones. They live stream video games. They do games like Jack Pox. Pox. See, I told you I've only had one, and I already can't talk. Uh, <laughs> Jack Box. Um, the Jackbox and they do uh, they play marbles they they stream live and I'm gonna tell you something they are hilarious uh, Jamie Lennon uh, was at Eastern Corbin for for a long time Sil guitar also played the Opry with uh, his wife Miss Georgia Jones and and so they they do these streams together but what I love about it is that they're not streaming the dog dad for money in their pocket um, all proceeds that uh, they raise during the streams go to MACC, which is Metro Atlanta Animal uh, Center, and it goes for food, vet care, um, what, whatever these dogs and animals need. Um, they raise money and they give it to the shelter. They know that, you know, it goes to those animals. Whereas a lot of places, you know, you know how that goes with these uh, shelters and stuff. I've seen it firsthand when Brandon worked at a... Uh, the Humane Society. It was just what I saw was just unbelievable. But uh, please, if you see it, Dog Dad Gaming, also the Kennel, and also Georgette uh, Jones. Uh, you'll see her do it. She'll stream, answer questions, talk to you, and y'all can stand. You know, watch the games as they're playing, or just whatever. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, but it's for a good cause, guys. So I want you to do that. One more thing. Connie Ledford, Connie's um, jewelry chest. She has a live stream where she makes all kinds of beautiful little treasures. Um, and she also does the paparazzi and tumblers and stuff like that. And so please, if you see see her on my page or anything like that, um, please um, support her. Okay, again, why would I go on my own show instead of plug myself and plug somebody else? Because it takes a village to build a community, you know. 
I plug them because I believe in what they're doing. I support them. I support what they're doing. I believe in what they're doing. And I would hope that one day if I, hey, somebody may say, hey, look, I learned that on, you know, a friend's cooking show, you know, whatever, you know, let's work together and build this uh, community. Okay, enough of that. So we're gonna, I'm going to start this meatloaf here in just one second. I know Sheila's getting tired, but um, on my cooking shows, I take and I do what I call the origin of whatever food that it is I'm cooking. And I found it to be very interesting. Meatloaf. Okay, so I'm making meatloaf today. Now, you would think it would have started in, you know, Sicily or, you know, Italy or something like that, you know. No. It actually... From Georgia? And, and before I... Europe's not Italy, right? Just making yeah. sure. <laughs> Just making sure. But she no. skipped school on no, those listen. days. Hey, listen, seriously, is that the meatloaf, it was it was during the medieval Europe, Europe... 15th century and um, they um, they used to take all different kind of meat scraps and they would take and put with like fruits and nuts and everything like in that basically it was uh, you know throw all that food to, to, to together kind of like we do with like goulash or shepherd's pie so that's kind of how it generated so it was interesting to find out how that started and it actually didn't start out as a uh, a dinner dish it started out as breakfast you know during these hard times you know during the depressions and all like that whatever you had they would put it all together put everything in it mama what was it mama used to call it metal catch a let them yep <laughs> i would say what are you cooking tonight mama she said i'm making metal catch a let them metal catch a let them everything but the kitchen sink went in whatever she was cooking you know um, but you know what I have to say is that my mama could take a slice of uh, bologna and make it taste like a filet mignon. So, but, um, okay, so believe it or not, the first recorded recipe for meatloaf in the historian uh, books was in 1870. And at that point, they did not add uh, ketchup. It wasn't until, uh, um, Lord, I should have wrote it down, uh, Lord... The, one of the first TV personalities that started coming out with the 30-minute uh, meals or whatever uh, in the 70s. Now, I can't remember the name, but what Martha Stewart. Betty Crocker? Betty Crocker. <laughs> it was Betty Crocker. She was the very first one to put out the cookbook and everything. And so, that's how that, um, they, they, she started adding the ketchup. And so, that's how that started. So, I'm going to start making the, uh, the meatloaf. And what I did, I've got one of the... Everybody's going to go, why are you cooking so much? Why am I cooking so much? Because what happens when we do our cooking show on Sundays, uh, we share it between households. Usually it's three, but Uncle Gary doesn't like peppers, so, but Sheila and I do. But anyhow, I've got one whole uh, bell pepper I used. And you know what is I've learned? My husband started buying these onions. And ever since he did, let me tell you something. It's just the, the ball, the ball onion, the whole fresh. It, you start using that, you get hooked on it. But anyhow, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add my peppers and my onions, just like that. Okay, and a lot of people make a mistake when they're doing their spices. They just kind of do this. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that. Raise it up high. See how the seasoning is going all over. It's covering the whole dish. Hi, honey. Honey song. Baby song. The dogs are excited. They always get excited when daddy and babies come home. Your key on uh, swap places with your food. So I'm going to put my little bit of parsley in there. That's the thing about going live, folks. You never know. You're going to have to stop and keep going back and forth. I'm not sure if you want me to park there or the other side. Oh, no. Hang on just a minute, guys. I'll be right back. Okay. Give me just a minute. We're trying to get uh, groceries in and everything. Ashton and uh, Jimmy's been out to the Carrier Park, what used to be the Asheville Motor Speedway, and found some little things out there 
uh, parts of uh, cars, uh, race cars, everything. Anyhow, this is my breadcrumbs. And I'm going to use a cup and a half because I have about, probably about six or seven pounds of them. And another thing I've seen people do on cooking shows that makes absolutely, positively no sense to me. Why would you take, why would you take your eggs and crack them in here? Because you know what happens? Here's my opinion on this. I'm using three eggs because I've got to, I'm double batching. Okay, what happens is you're going to mix up that uh, meatloaf. You're going to get yolk over here, white over here. You're not getting a true balance of the egg. So don't crack it and put it in there. Mix that, beat that egg up. Maybe yes, another dish to wash another pork, but well, who cares? Right? Who cares? All right, and then I just see that I just go in there like that. Put your gloves on. I, I fix it too. It's funny she used to said that because when I go to mix this, is I I do wear gloves. Anytime that I'm handling the protein, which is your beef, pork, chickens, whatever, uh, I do put my gloves on. Ketchup. That's you know that's just one of them things. How, however you want to do it, I'll show you about how much I'm putting in here. Because I'm really bad about not that that's that's the consist that's what I want right there. But I'm gonna show you something else here at, when I make my the glaze real quick. Um, hang on a minute, guys. Got to get me some gloves. Okay, same thing with like with your salt and your pepper. I put salt in my hand. I don't use a whole lot of salt. I don't go low. Go high. I gonna see. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Same thing with your pepper, and that gives you. You're evenly distributing your your spices. See that? See that love come down? And that's all there is to that. Got my ketchup, and, and after I get this molded, as I will show you, uh, I will make the, the glaze. And I actually, me personally, I like to put my glaze on um, just like five minutes before I'm going to serve it. Put that, that sweet glaze in what I use. I use ketchup and brown sugar. I'll show you that. And I don't put it on. I don't. I just put ketchup on top while it's cooking. Did you see? I just get right in there. And a lot of people will do this and start mashing. Don't overwork your ground beef. Don't. Show it some love. Just look. This is all you got to do. All I'm doing is take my fingers and doing this just like that. I don't want to overwork it. Because then it's just, I don't know. I don't. It's, to me, it just makes it tough. I like being able, and plus you get an even consistency of all your ingredients. Everything kind of marries together. And I just spin my bowl. And of course, you got to be careful knowing me, it'll flip up off the counter. But anyhow, I'm doing that. And like I said, I'm not squeezing it. I'm not, I'm just letting all that. Y'all see how I'm doing that? And you notice every, every piece of the bowl that your little piece of the bowl, every piece of the meat that you're looking at in the bowl, do you see how evenly my eggs even, my breadcrumbs are even, my peppers are even, onions are even, evening, my onions are evening, I think I'll drink a beer, I think I'll do it now, sorry, had a moment, I told you guys, you never know, and I ain't having two beers, y'all wait till I have about six, okay, so y'all see this, okay, now, <coughs> excuse me, You notice I did not squeeze the, the stew out of my daggum <coughs> excuse me, ground beef. I did not overwork it. So all I'm gonna do, watch, you just flatten it out. You just start <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I've got my windows open. And I've got <coughs> I got allergies bad. So, pardon me if I cough, but it's hot in here, so. Anyhow, if you see, that's how I'm working my, my meatloaf. See how I'm patting that down like that? Again, I'm not overworking the ground beef. No, but tomorrow she's going to feel like she's been at the gym. No, I already feel like that. I've been moving stuff, getting stuff ready for that auction for the VFW for Bobby Caldwell. 
And trust me, you, I feel every muscle in my neck, every part of my body. But anyhow, you see how I did that? And I do feel like I just went around with Roman Reigns or something right down my shoulders. And I tell you, you're going, okay, what are you going to do now? Is that I want, you always want an even amount, an even thickness. Because you know this is going to kind of shrink a little bit. And what we're going to do actually is that Sheila's going to go home and fix hers. I'm going to mash the, these potatoes because she's tired and she's going to take her hers home. But anyhow, this is what I call scoring. And I don't mean like scoring. Scoring. Different kind of scoring. Touchdown. See this? I'm just going to go right down the middle. Just like that. And a lot of people say, well, why would you make so much if it was just you? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you can freeze this. They ain't nothing better than a cold uh, meatloaf, sandwich. meatloaf sandwich now. But you can cut these and put them in little, uh, just separate portions. Okay, so I'm going to take my gloves off now. Just, oh Lord, I'm glad to hey, I just want to ask. Now, does one of them look bigger to you, or is it just me? This one is wider. This one is Miss thicker. Miss Teresa, does one look... Does I mean, she wants to be doing it perfect. I mean, it don't look like it's either. <laughs> not pretty. Okay, so it's, it, it's not perfect. What do they say? Poe body's nerfic. See, that's that backward talk again. Poe body's talk. nerfic. Poe body? <laughs> Poe body's nerfic. Okay, real quick, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to put this on, then I'm going to cover it and cook it. Um, I know that you guys already know how to uh, mash potatoes. I'm not going to go through all that today, doing the potatoes. But I'm going to tell you, I leave the skin on my mashed potatoes because I love, love the skin. skin on potatoes. Um, it is a choice. You can. These are Yukon potatoes. You can use pecan or you can use um, the roasted red, the red potatoes, or some people call them new potatoes. Difference is Yukons are better for like your mashed potatoes and your potato salads and stuff. Your red potatoes are good for potato salad, but also they roast better. So I want to show you what I'm doing here. My Ruby, she's happy to see everybody. And this is probably a quarter of a bottle ketchup and only thing I'm gonna do I've got my ketchup and here we go here my nanny and my mama made the best meatloaf in the world remember I told you about them containers don't throw stuff away I got my powder sugar, got my, powder sugar my brown sugar my watchdog looking to go kill a squirrel or something I guess uh, I had my measuring cup So you just take you some brown sugar. I used, uh, since I used, uh, Ruby, Mommy's on TV talking, not TV, I'm not on TV, Mommy's talking. I may have to get her a hot dog, that's what she's wanting. My dogs are obsessed with hot dogs. So they will drive me nuts and won't hush if I'm in the kitchen until I give them a piece of a hot dog. Good girl, good girl. All right, now she'll leave, she'll leave me alone until about that 6 o'clock. No, about 6 o'clock, and she'll be ready for her. Uh, she'll, they get a half of a half. Uh, anyhow, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that, that brown sugar, and I'm mixing that brown sugar up with my ketchup. And that's what's going to go on top of the meatloaf. And uh, the... You want the you want this on top of yours now, or are you going to wait and we'll put your own on? It don't matter. You can do it All right, now. Well, we'll go ahead and do it. Let it cook together. Because she's, like I said, she's going to take hers home and put hers in her oven because uh, she's worked today and been up since 2 o'clock. Probably went to sleep at. I actually well, went to sleep at midnight. We had we didn't have any power from 6 until yeah, till we, midnight last night because of the bad windstorm. We've had some Fever Dam windstorm was pretty bad. Yeah, we've had some. Had fire up there. Fever Dam Loop area. Yeah. I can't uh, remember exactly where it was. 
I remember uh, Jeff Morton and them was uh, talking. Yeah, about. he he said a mess. I saw his message on Facebook. No power. Yeah. No, we didn't have power until flipping twelve o'clock. I had candles going and I didn't want to leave my house. Uh, or fall asleep with the candles burning. Yeah, that's I've got I've got I've got, I've got a phobia about that. All right, guys. So as you can see, it was not really complicated to, to do this. And you know, if if you've got other people that you take care of, your your parents or aunts or uncles or anything like that, and you're gonna make a meatloaf, go ahead and make a batch of it. Go ahead and make you a good batch because it's not gonna go to waste. But anyhow, this is my my meatloaf with the the ketchup and brown sugar. Uh, glaze on top. Um, I'm going to cook this in the oven for about an hour but I'm because I'm going to cook it lower. I like to cook mine for about an hour at 325. That's how uh, I cook it. That's how I cook it. Um, but uh, again, I just, the ground beef, um, the breadcrumbs. But make sure that you cook it to the temperature that it needs to be in the middle of the meat. Yeah, uh, ground beef, uh, technically we ground beef because it's beef. Um, they used to say that you couldn't do it, but actually you can, because if you think about it, if you go to the store, you buy your steak, you can bring it home, the temperature for uh, a medium rare steak is 130. So, ground beef is made with beef, um, but it does have the fat in it. So you kind of take a chance uh, if you eat uh, burgers, medium rare, but I do. I like raw, uh, what is it, pate? I think it's called pate, whatever. I love I do. I'm weird. I'm telling you, I'm weird. I like That's my. That's why she's nuts, guys. I like. I like. I probably got worms in my brain. <laughs> it's better than this. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Um, again, when when you when you're doing they your have medication when you're there. They have medication for me now. Yeah. You get worms in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, help me. Uh, okay, remember, guys, when you're doing. Your, uh, Remember, guys, when you're doing your meat loaf. Hold on, now, Ruby. You've already had your hot dog. No. <laughs> you get that hot dog. Here's what happens when I'm in the when I'm in the kitchen. They uh, they absolutely feel yeah, like that every five minutes. They're in the bottom drawer. Uh, they feel like that I've got to stop what I'm doing right then and there and get them a hot dog. I could be in bed and trust me, at three o'clock, Ruby gets me up. Six o'clock, she gets me up, and she comes in here. Yeah, Tracy said the one in the back is bigger. Yeah, it, it, it did. I was trying to do it evenly. Uh, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked sometimes with the, the dogs uh, in the kitchen and uh, barking and everything. So no more. Uh, but what I was saying. Oh, there was a rest of the stop right there. Uh, what I was saying about the, the meatloaf for a quick. Remember, guys, don't overwork your meatloaf. You don't have to squeeze and wrap and all like that um you just do i showed you how to do it how i pressed it and and fold, molded it with my with my hands um don't uh don't take and just crack your eggs and throw it in a pan in your, in your meat love mix your eggs up in a separate container that way you're getting the even distribution of the egg in your mix but you know, some of these country folks don't like to go through all that stuff. If you don't want to go through it, I'll tell you what you do. You take, let me see if you can do it. You want to demonstrate? You take an egg and crack it in your hand and you rub it. <laughs> <laughs> see if that'll work for you. I don't think it'll work for you. But I mean, I mean, it, it could be a preference, but honestly, it is that I have found is that you don't get a well-balanced uh, consistency. If you don't pull your ground beef and all your ingredients stuff like that and kind of like roll it you're not going to get even distribution of your peppers and your onions and your breadcrumbs and your eggs and your partridge in a pear tree <laughs> i can't help it folks i can't help it christmas is over i'm glad it's over and i'm glad that i'm getting to the age my kids are getting to the age i ain't got to go through that no more i know that's right even to the decrementations Oh, mine are in there. I have to start in October. I do. I have to start in October decorating this house. And it's like, oh well. But anyhow, we're going to um, go ahead and go, guys. Thank you guys for being here. Love you all. Well, I'm Teresa Harley, my true fan. We Thank you, you, Teresa. We love you, honey, and have a good day. I'll talk to you uh, later on this evening or tomorrow. Um, everybody make you some meatloaf and some taters. Uh, call your mama, call your daddy, aunt and uncle, families, grandparents if they're alive. 
Call them and tell them that you love them. And even if you don't lie like hell, but you do it anyway. <laughs> okay? You do it anyway. Medea says that. That's right. You, I don't care if you like them or not. You make them think you like them. Because they're the only parents and uh, family that you're going to ever have. So, we love you guys. Be good. And, um, hey, like and share. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Um, again, we're not going to be live for the next two weeks. Uh, we got the, the benefit coming up on uh, the 16th. <laughs> Sorry, I had to nurse my daughter. I thought she was too old for that, Teresa. Oh, my gosh, Teresa. Girl. Man. <laughs> we love you, baby. Um, <laughs> happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get just a, a, a picture of Amanda. Mom, can I have a sip? <laughs> oh, Teresa, I can't help it. Hey, Mom, be still. <laughs> Did you have this? Never mind. Yeah, we, yeah, I could resist that. You know, if it comes to my mind, it, it, it's going to come out of my mouth, no filter. Uh, but anyhow... Uh, love you guys. Happy Easter to everybody. See everybody April 16th. And I will do small things um, for the next two weeks. I know. She's probably peed her pants. I know. I'm about to if I don't stop. All right. We'll see we you have guys. an extra box. We have a, a, an extra she, box. She said of, for us to behave. We have an extra box of uh, the pens if you need them, Teresa. No, no. We need them. Speak for yourself, honey. I, I'm not there yet. It is what it is. So I, I give them away until I'm there. Okay. All right. All right, guys. We love you. Again, happy Adios. Easter. Everybody take care. Call somebody. Tell them it's love you, love you, Teresa. Love you, Teresa. I'll talk to you later on today. See you tomorrow, probably. And God bless everybody. Bye, y'all. Watch the yeah, She can't get it up.